by way of New York, by way of California. She is doing some awesome things, not only in the community, but she still looks great, y'all. I mean, for for her to be the age she is, I was talking about her yesterday. Um, the fact that this woman could probably outdance all of us, uh -uh. one. <laughs> And her body is slamming, okay? I don't know how old she is, but I know she's older than me. Oh, yeah. And she looks, <laughs> she looks like she's in her 30s, okay? Oh, yeah. So I am bringing Miss Trina Parks, who was the first African-American in being Black History Month and what we call a celebration of our history. I just thought it was important to bring you in, Trina. I know my fans probably say you love Trina because that's all you talk about is Trina Aww. Parks. But I feel in some way responsible to make sure that we we honor you in whatever that, that way is because as a first African-American woman to do uh, 007 Diamonds Are Forever, you um, you set a pathway in the 70s um, that just have not been recognized to mm -hmm. the fullest. Mm -hmm. And so I think the more we shout, it's almost like the more you shout, the more you recognize, the mm -hmm. more you shout. And I, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because as soon as it's, it's almost automatic. As soon as you either appear on something or you do something, then something else happens to recognize you and get you an award. Mm -hmm. uh, Vanguard mm -hmm. uh, yeah. recipient. I, I just mm -hmm. want you to tell the people, as a uh, African-American woman back in the day when you were 007 mm -hmm. audition, um, did you ever think that you were going to make a – a trail that you did you trailblazed for holly berry you trailblazed for a few of us right mm -hmm. so what could you tell us about back in the day that would transcend to what we do as african americans today mm. and coming into entertainment well i was very i would say blessed i'm not using it lightly mm -hmm. to have an a wonderful agent uh agency for the performance I had, uh, when, I, when I first went from New York, I went to uh, Los Angeles to do the movie Great White Hope oh. uh, because Donald, Donald McHale uh, choreographed it. Mm -hmm. And, well, he's gone now, but I was in his company and we toured Europe all over Eastern and Western Europe before the wall came down. And, wow. you know, that was 60s. Wow. And uh, when I came back... Um, I uh, and, and it, oh, he called me mm -hmm. and saying he was going. He and with several other company members and other dancers, he called and said, "Do you want to do this movie?" You know, we, uh, uh, James Earl Jones was starring, wow. uh, and um, Jane Alexander played his wife. Uh, but James, I had done uh, Emperor Jones with James uh -huh. James Earl Jones back earlier. You know. Uh, and when we were on tour, we we did, we did the Jones, and we also did the actual dance concert. Wow! So Donnie, you know, choreographed both. So I had, you know, of course I knew James, and in fact, <laughs> I was thinking about he when we. If you have ever seen uh, Emperor Jones, it's a a, a a scene where he is really running through the. Uh, the uh, forest, and I think someone's the, chasing the woods, the and, woods and, and everything. And all. Yeah, can we still get that? On you, on YouTube, maybe I, I mean video? I have the movie itself. Yeah. But okay, awesome on VHS. All right, <laughs> <laughs> don't you know tell them. Don't tell them. <laughs> oh yeah, VHS. Yes, <laughs> I, have to, I have several on VHS, which I have to um, to what do you call transfer to right. whatever it's called digital now. <laughs> now yes, <laughs> you might lose some. Of yeah, because I might lose it. Yeah. Saying. So anyway, we, I knew you know of course he I knew James and worked with him very closely. Uh, in the play. So he called and said, we want to come. So I did say, yeah. He said, you'd have to pay your own way here, but, you know, you get very good salary because we're going to work at least two two weeks, mm -hmm. you know, and that would be SAG, a Screen Actors Guild rate for, at that time, I think it was, uh, it was extras, but we were, like, featured mm -hmm. because we were, you know, dancers. We right. were featured dancers. And, and uh, so, uh, but that actually wasn't my first movie. I did Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. <laughs> Before Beyond that, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. But I didn't do. I did it as a as a, as a, um, a stand-in for my friend um, uh, 
Well, oh, she was uh, she was she was only black in in the movie. Okay. okay. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> so that's what that brought me to L.A. And then I decided I was going to do my show. Mm-hmm. I wanted to because I'd done Broadway and all that before. I said I want to do my own act. Right. You know. Right. So a friend referred me to an agent. I mean, a manager. And she booked me in the Ye Little Club, uh-huh. which is not there in Beverly Hills. Okay. It's not there anymore. And that's. And she invited all these different agents. A- agency for the Performing Arts was one of them. Uh-huh. So, of course, at that time, you know, they actually call you. Mm, excuse me. Yeah, it's okay. I have a lozenger. <laughs> um, there was no, there was no cell phones or computers at that time. So right, the right. agents actually call you and uh-huh. you actually talk to them. No emails. <laughs> so anyway. It's a different time oh, now. Oh, gosh. It's Very a different time. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. So they were the one. They so uh, Marty called me, and well, obviously I signed with them and all, um, and said that uh, the 007 uh, people from England want to see you. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he the new some of the because Marty knew everybody. Right. He, he you know Marty. It's Klein. important to know people. So, yes. Right? Okay. And so anyway, they said they'd like to see you because they wanted someone who danced, of course, and I had, of course, uh, you know, a, a strong dancer. Mm-hmm. And also but knew karate. Well, he didn't know I knew karate, but I had learned karate from Dunham, Catherine Dunham. Oh, when wow. I was in her, I was in her last company in sixty four to sixty six. So you can't Paris. see. You can't just go past uh, Catherine Dunham like that. I'm getting ready to put us on on video, but you oh. you can't go past Catherine Dunham. You actually worked with Catherine Dunham. Yes, wow. and in sixty four, I did the Paula show. And that was the last time her company, professional, her last company, um, original company, Mm -hmm. uh, performed with her. She was the last time she performed. Wow. And uh, I was the youngest. I was 15 at the time. So everybody, I guess, can do their math. Well, my age now. (laughs) Yeah, I was 75 in December. Okay. So we'll let that go. (laughs) No, no. I just so. want to. I want to say that seventy five. Okay, seventy five looks like this, y'all. For those who are going to be checking it out later, <laughs> it looks good. Seventy five looks fantastic. Uh, I'm so blessed. Yeah, and so. Uh, that that's the awesome thing. So keep going, Trina. So look. yeah. So that's um, how I, you know, got to uh, going to L to L A. Uh-huh. But like I said before that, Marsha Marsha McBroon. Okay, she was the one that was in, in Great White. Uh, I mean, in the Valley of the Dolls. And she said, come here and be my extra. They're looking for someone. There wasn't a lot many black uh, scent people, or, right. you know, th- at that time around. Right. So they said, and I said, oh, my gosh, I'm going, I'm going to do G- Great White Hope, like, in a few weeks after yeah. that. So, anyway, it worked out. I did that. And then I, uh, it was at the same studio, same, you know, I think it's 20th Century Fox. Yeah, I think it was 20th Century that we did Great White Hope. So mm-hmm. I did <laughs> I was I did the the, um, uh, the Valley of the Dolls first, and then that afterwards. And I just like I said, I decided to stay, put my put an act together. Uh, so I put some uh, classical, because I gotta say, my father Charles Frazier, he was the lead tenor sax man for Cab Calloway's band, and before that, Jimmy wow. Lunsford, and then um, Scott Joplin was his first. You know, did you all so, hear that? Like this is. Uh, awesome history. Yeah. Your father worked with Cab Calloway. Oh, yeah. Many years. Um, so you had that running through mm. your veins and the tenacity mm. that it took to continue the journey had to be incredible. And I'm yeah. sure your father was yeah. real supportive. Oh, he was. And that's what I think I'm so blessed because in so many years I've heard from people, oh, I, wish I could dance or I could sing her, but my my family didn't want me to do it. They wanted me to go and cooperate. Or, and I said, you know, my father was there for me. Wow. Um, he was with Cab when I was born. Mm. Uh, my my mother did pass, pass away when I was born. So I was a Syrian wow. baby. And he had to come from Chicago because he was, you know, with Cab there. And you know, come and so uh, he. I was given to my aunt while he was on. The, my father was still on the road. Yeah, you know and that was you know that was the forties. So um, I was my aunt who was extremely religious. I mean, fanatically <laughs> religious. And my father. I mean, he was spiritual, but he wasn't right. Like, he wasn't like that. Oh, he was a musician. So, so, so when we come back, <laughs> we're gonna talk about that because that had to be challenging. 
and knowing that your father was supportive, but daddy was on the road. Yeah. So, and auntie was your mama. Oh, she was. And she and she wasn't playing so, and she wasn't having that. No. And so that, we're going to talk about the challenges <laughs> because there are people out in the audience, I'm sure, that are in situations where they're talented, they're gifted. Yes. Your gift will make room for you, but you got to have people to support you while you're trying to make the room. Right. And so it's it's important that as we move into this new phenomenon with all of the people that I've spoken with that are now recreating themselves is finding the the glitch that makes you happy and a world that is secure enough around you that you can follow your dreams and mm-hmm. soar. So let's talk about it when we okay. come back. I'm going to just give this a little bit of time because we definitely are talking about challenges. It does talk about perseverance. Yes. And it talks about how you have the support of, of those mm-hmm. around you and your loved ones. You still have mm-hmm. to have that self motivation so what was internal Mm. that struck you as this is something I've got to do it was always in me my aunt who just passed last year my mom's sister was saying that your mom always said you would be a dancer Wow! You, he, she felt that you would. Yeah, because she was all over the place said, in her what? belly. What, Aunt Emmeline? Are you really? Are you kidding me? No, said, no. Wow! Isn't that something? That's oh something. my gosh! That's but anyway, something. I've always, really, I've always just felt the dance mm-hmm. in me. Uh, my father, uh, sometimes when he was, you know, coming out on, on off the road, he would take me to the Brooklyn Academy of Music called BAM now. Yes. And uh, I was take uh, he's he I was taking ballet there. I was yes. about six when I started taking ballet. Yes, I've been uh, there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think all the dancers have yeah. to experience that. Yeah, go ahead. Of course. Go ahead. And then I take music, uh piano. So we went to the piano, he's telling me this, you know, I don't really remember it, but right. that I sat down next you sit down next to the a pianist, uh, you know, the teacher, and he she will start playing and they want to see your Listen for your ear and how you do. So they play something, and you're supposed to play something, uh, you know, yes. to hear, I guess, the tone or whatever in your ear. Well, Daddy said, uh, she started playing, and I jumped up and started dancing. Right. I didn't play one. and, and she I didn't want to play the piano. She, did, she kept on playing, and, and and he said when she when she changed tempos, I just changed <laughs> I just kept on dancing. And at that time, was you know I had just crin- crinolines with the big skirts. Right. And he said, your, you would just turn, turn. in the skirts. Oh. <laughs> and it was the funniest thing. I said, I, did, I didn't play one note. And he said, I thought the teacher would not, wouldn't take you because you didn't, you well, know, you she started saw dancing. Your talent. <laughs> she saw your talent and put you in ballet class, but which is did. what they did. To me too. Yeah. Yeah. So, and but I, I did take piano, but I was I was a person that could hear something and I could play it. Yes. You know, but yes. I, I was that was a stubbornness in me that I didn't. I, I looked at the music and I could I can read music slowly now, but I would just hear it and I would I would like not look at it. I just play it with the four fingers. I, I think know? that I think that's a I part of I think that. that's a part of being a dancer. I think. We hear music Mm -hmm. with our our beat. We have a rhythm in us. My husband was telling me, he was like, you are a instrument. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for another instrument to play another instrument, (laughs) right? Because we get off center because that's not our instrument that we're playing. Yes. And so I think that that's why it's tough for us to play other instruments because we are the instrument. Mm -hmm. Our arms, our legs, our fingers, Mm -hmm. even our eyes Mm -hmm. um, and the sensories that we have as dancers is just beyond uh, energy. There's mm-hmm. an energy that comes, and, and so this right. is phenomenal that your dad mm-hmm. and your father saw the mm-hmm. talent in you set at mm-hmm. such a young age. And as you mm-hmm. progress throughout, and I know you went to several schools, you actually studied with Alvin Ailey, mm-hmm. um, you did understudy, and you actually did some of the, the principal dancing when you was with of the Alvin Ailey group, no, or then you I, went, I went to, to another. To, yeah, group. I went straight to uh, Tally Beatty's company. That's it. Tally Beatty was an original dan- was a, uh, one of the original dancers in uh, Miss uh, Dunham's company. Yes, and uh, so and he also was a Graham dancer. Yes, so I was both also. So I 
he, I didn't even have to take For those audition. who don't know what mm-hmm. Graham oh, is, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's well, Martha Graham, <laughs> Martha Graham, who was a creator of modern dance. Yes. And and our people at Spelman and in other mm-hmm. historical black colleges that still study dance actually mm-hmm. have to study these people yes. um, that we're talking about, that you actually worked with folks that were connected to yes. the, the, mm-hmm. the people that are actually in the history books. Mm-hmm. It is amazing mm-hmm. to me. Um, how the um, 70 something years of life experience and you still smile, <laughs> you still glow, you still have a youthful <laughs> presence about you and you still give to the community. Um, tell us some of the things that you're doing in the community for our veterans. Oh, and, oh. Yes. Very, very high on my list, too. Uh, first of all, my father was in WW2, or World War II. He was a Navy and um, an Army band, too. Awesome. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But he was, you know, in the Navy. Um, and my cousin, uh, who would be the same age as I, we were like brother and sister. We used to play together and all. He had to go to Nam. You mm-hmm. know, that was the drafting years. And I was in Europe uh, at the time, but when I came back, I found out he was he was killed. Now he was, I guess, what eighteen or nineteen, because that's what I was when I came back from Europe with, from with with Miss Dunham's company, and so that was very. It, it tore me apart because I didn't even really, you know. I, of course, I had a feeling he would be going to the draft because that you had to, uh, the males, um, but. And it's been very dear to my heart about that losing him at such a young age. And uh, and then later on in my life, I had two dear platonic male friends that died of Agent Orange. So wow. all of these things. And when, um, excuse me, Tony Bars, who's the CEO of the Vets uh, 22, which vet, what it is is that vets pe- die, commit suicide. Every day, yes. in this in this world, yes, uh, every twenty two you know days at least, and uh, so he asked me about uh, you know being uh, involved with that and having a house uh, that for this uh, type of uh, a medical uh, a medical house. Yes. So I it, he's building a Trina Trina Parks uh, Vet Twenty Two house awesome. in the area. I think it's Tucker, but I've got it. I should have looked on the address, but it's yeah, it's about half hour from Atlanta proper area. Wonderful to drive, but he's yeah building a house. For when is two, that scheduled? Is twenty twenty five or twenty two? Well, he wanted it for twenty two because he started in I think nineteen. Right, but because of the COVID, the COVID I think, it's I think gonna, backed it up a couple of years. But oh yeah, by hopefully by twenty twenty four we'll it, it, be it, yeah. talking and and it'll be completed. And is there anything that so, people can do? Maybe contact you in terms of su- supporting the project because this is so yes. necessary. Mm-hmm. Uh, taking care of our veterans is is mentally mm-hmm. um, is probably one of the biggest things I think we can do for the vets so because important. we can get vet vet housing, we can get vet programming. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I do understand is a lot of our homeless out there are veterans. Oh, and their veterans mm-hmm. are homeless not because they don't have a check every month mm-hmm. coming in, but because mentally mm-hmm. they're messed That's up. It. Yeah. And then to cope with the, the things that mentally they struggle with, mm-hmm. they drink, they smoke, mm-hmm. whatever the case mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. So I tell folks, don't judge people because you don't know mm-hmm. where they are oh, yes. in life. You don't know where they've come from mm-hmm. in life. And um, mm-hmm. I grew up in New York and mm-hmm. as you mm-hmm. and um we we learn not to judge folks mm-hmm. that sit on the bench because a lot of those pigeon folks that were on the bench were psychologists and mm-hmm. professors yeah. at Yale mm-hmm. and folks mm-hmm. that have struggled mentally mm-hmm. and they found themselves overwhelmed. Yes. Uh, the Park Avenue folks that, that lost mm-hmm. money on investments mm-hmm. were, you know, out there in the park and, and, yeah. and they did a special on that mental oh, yeah. anguish of losing <laughs> life and, uh, yes. losing uh, interest in life, and yes. this is what happens. Yes. People become homeless. <clears throat> so mentally, men, mm. women are struggling, and you are building a house, a foundation mm. for the veterans to come and get some help, help. get some counseling, you, right. and get some actual principles that can help them get, navigate. Absolutely. So we want to support mm. that, Trina. Give us your you information know, on how we can contact you so that we can continue to support well, what it, you're doing. Uh, 
since I'm not from the computer age, it takes me, <laughs> takes me a long time to try to. F- well, just send and your I should have written it down. Just so email. I'll just my, give us what I do email. know <laughs> without you, looking it up. Right, is your email, email. so give I'll say email. T as uh-huh. in Trina, E Edward, A Apple, B as in boy, E Edward, Y at yahoo.com. T Bay at yahoo.com. Wonderful. So, T Bay okay. at mm-hmm. yahoo.com. So and that's how you can get the information. Just email mm-hmm. Trina. And then I'll send them. And you can email to, Trina if you mm-hmm. want Trina to come and speak. Yeah, she can yeah. come and speak to your groups. Um, mm-hmm. Just I can having still, her. I can teach if you're you in can, dance. Yep. World. I was yeah. getting ready to say if uh-huh. you're having any kind of productions coming up, she can actually be a choreographer for you. Um, she can help even bring the play together she's had a couple of productions herself Mm -hmm. um there are so many talents and gifts in this woman she sings she dances Mm -hmm. she choreographs she she does a lot Mm -hmm. and then she has a heart for the community so anytime we we're doing something in the community and you need someone to come and just invite the crowd to to enjoy life and and to see life she can still put that skirt on and move (laughs) so just say I'm just saying, (laughs) email Trina Parks if you have anything that you want her to do, if you want her to to present as the 007 Mm -hmm. James Bond girl, she does that. That's her right to do it, and she can do it, and that's what she does. Mm -hmm. So we just thank Trina so much for stopping by and talking with us and sharing with us. We're going to just give us... A little bit of happy, you know, because we getting ready to talk about relationships because I know you got a little bit of information on it, too. What? Yeah. Yeah. On what? Yeah. She's been single for a minute. And so we're going to talk. <laughs> a we're lot gonna of talk minutes. <laughs> we're going to talk about how it rolls. You know, you got one on the other on the other. How we function in this society. Um, a lot of us, uh, you were a widow. And you've been single for a while, Mm -hmm. but you had relationships. Mm -hmm. And I was single for a while. I was Mm -hmm. married for a long time, Mm -hmm. single for a long time, and now remarried. Mm -hmm. And so I think in terms of relationships, how it ebb and flows, Mm -hmm. we have to be open, right? Mm -hmm. I want Mm -hmm. you to talk to... Talk to us about that, because we were talking a little bit about how challenging sometimes mm-hmm. it is, because mm-hmm. you do want to continue relationships, and you're in your 70s, but you look, like if you were out on the street, Trina, I know you get approached mm-hmm. by the younger guys, yeah, and I so do. we were talking about younger, and Trina was like, <laughs> shoot, 65 is too young, I'm like, Trina, <laughs> 65 is a senior, Trina. <laughs> Oh, is that what I am? <laughs> so, Trina, so talk to us about that feeling it of is. of just being in a relationship mm. at your age. What does that feel like? It, well, I I had really had a wonderful time at, with a gentleman uh, that was older mm-hmm. than I because I've always want you know always had uh, had my husband of course was o- older than I, and but now that I'm older. <laughs> Uh, I've got, you know, a lot of younger men, like you said, do approach me, but I said, oh, he's really nice looking. He's got, you know, he seems very nice, but I just have to But he's maybe too young? Open my, yes. 68 is too young, Trina? <laughs> well, I have to think about it. Okay. But, but again, my main thing is that I, being an entertainer, yes. you have to realize that I am a very open to all Everything. Yes. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I'm very spiritual. Yes. But I mean, I don't go with this man and then I'm with that man while I'm with this man. I'm right. always, what do you call it? Uh, committed. You're with, committed You're to that person committed. who I am with, you yes. know. And I'm not, you know. Uh, we and don't, when we, we, and, and yeah. that's the thing. We don't get married as much anymore. We just get committed. Mm-hmm. If a man says, and this mm-hmm. is just a little nugget, because I think we as women get kind of messed up in our heads because of traditional thinking, traditional way of thinking, if we were raised in the church, we were raised in the in the on the mm-hmm. word of God, it is hard to transcend that to 
what's going on in society. But we can't judge that. We just have to live mm. in the society we live in. Mm-hmm. And so um, when we talk about relationships, when a man says, I'm committed to you, he's mm-hmm. he's basically saying, I'm committed to you mm-hmm. and only you yes. as long as that's what he's saying. Mm-hmm. And so how do you feel about that? Do you think that as we move out of this COVID season and now that we're out and about, you know, how do you feel about uh, bridging uh, relationships and and now that you're at your your age that you mm-hmm. are, are maturity do you think marriage is something that you would look into or you would probably just be committed because of all of the different societal things that mm. go on it, it's uh something i've thought about yes but i'm very adamant about someone uh that the man to really know who I am and who my friends and family right, are. Right. Uh, my friends, you know, a lot of, I, I have a lot of gays in yes. my life yes. uh, that I, uh, you know, very dear friends, yes. male, female, the LGBT, yes. all, all of that. Yes. And they have to know, they have to accept that, you know, I, I'm straight, but right. I'm, you know. You're around I'm all around, of that. And that doesn't and mean I have to be there, but you have to know as a man, as my man, as my uh, significant other, sni- significant other. So yes. that this is who I am, and yes. also I do go out on the road a lot. Yeah, and that's and tough for men, isn't so it? That we that talk about the trust issue with entertainment is, and entertainers. There's always a trust factor yeah. with the men or women in their lives, and I just want to yeah. leave with this mm-hmm. um, before we go to the next song because I love leaving the door open um, mm-hmm. <laughs> because we have to learn how to leave that door open yes. and not be so restrictive yes. and not be so confining, even if you're in a committed situation. Yeah. Allow that person to soar in their yeah, own, own space that's right because if right. they were wonderful and energetic <laughs> and vibrant when that's they what met you, you like, well that that, that that's what you. they're going to continue to do that's right so we want to leave the door open i think that would be a great way to yes. go ahead and move into the this that's... ending but i just thank you again miss trina you. for coming and sitting with me oh. and chatting with marlana j today uh, sometimes it. we got to just leave the door open don't we oh that's great <laughs> then you did it well too <laughs> i think my guest again trina parks 007 <laughs> first African American on Diamonds Are Forever mm-hmm. and all of the community efforts that she's doing. Again, reach out and support her 100%. Make sure you call in the show when I'm on at 404-603-8770. Again, this is Marlana J Today show and I thank everyone who listened in on Tune In on Real 1100 a.m. on the iHeart Radio, Mm -hmm. and then those who are tuning in directly on 1100 a.m. I thank everyone for supporting the show. Continue to listen in. We've got some great guests coming, and I will not stop until God says so. Mm -hmm. This one is for you all. I'm going to send this out to everyone who continues to press forward to your dreams, to press forward to your